If you enjoy the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. Dark Side of Comedy is a documentary series that premiered on Vice TV August 16, 2022. Vice renewed the series for a second season, which premiered on October 17, 2023. Narrated by Dave Foley of Kids in the Hall fame and News Radio, it features cautionary tales about the lives and or deaths of popular stand-up comedians. Now, I found season two delved farther into the darker side of comedy, as it were. And also, the subject matter probably was a bit stronger than the first season, albeit that first season was also superbly done. To start off, of course, with the first episode, it focuses on the heavyweight, one of the greatest comedic talents of our time, namely, of course, Robin Williams. Robin was born in 1951 and unfortunately died in 2014. He's probably regarded as one of the greatest comedians of all time. He received numerous accolades, including Academy Award, two Prime Time Emmy Awards, six Golden Globes, two Screen Actors Guilds, and five Grammy Awards. From performing stand-up comedy in San Francisco and Los Angeles during the mid-1970s, he rose to fame playing the alien Mork in the ABC sitcom Mork and Mindy, before starring in his first film, Popeye, in 1980. He won the Best Supporting Actor for Goodwill Hunting in 1997, but also had Oscar-nominated roles for Good Morning Vietnam, Dead Poets Society, and The Fisher King. He also lent his voice to animated films like Aladdin in 1992. Unfortunately though, he was found dead at his home in Paradise K, California in August of 2014, at just the age of 63. His death was ruled a suicide. According to Williams' widow, he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and had been experiencing depression, anxiety and increasing paranoia. Episode 2 focuses on Sam Kinison, who was born in 1953 and died in 1992. He was an American stand-up comedian and actor. A former Pentecostal preacher, he performed stand-up routines that were characterized by his intense sudden tirades, punctuated with his distinctive scream, similar to charismatic preachers. Initially performing free, Kinnison became a regular fixture at the comedy store, where he met and eventually befriended such comics as Robin Williams and Jim Carrey. Kinnison's comedy was crass, observational humor, especially towards women and dating, and his popularity grew quickly, earning him appearances on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, Late Night with David Letterman, and The Saturday Night Live. At the peak of his career in early 1992, he was killed in a car crash at just the age of 38. Episode 3 deals with Joan Rivers. Joan Alexandra Malinsky was born in 1933 and died in 2014. She was noted for her blunt, often controversial comedic persona and that was heavily self-deprecating and acerbic, especially towards celebrities and politicians, delivered in her signature New York accent. She is considered a pioneer woman in comedy. Rivers started her career in comedy clubs in Greenwich Village alongside her peers George Carlin, Woody Allen and Richard Pryor. She then rose to prominence in 1965 as a guest on The Tonight Show, hosted by her mentor Johnny Carson. In 1986, with her own rival program, The Late Show with Joan Rivers, Rivers became the first woman to host a late-night network television show. The one thing, though, that the episode really highlights is Rivers' personal battles with her own body at times. She suffered from bulimia. And of course it was well known how many times she went under the surgeon's knife to have cosmetic work done. She also married Edgar Rosenberg in 1965. They had one child, Melissa Rivers. Rivers was married to Rosenberg until his suicide in 1987, four days after she'd asked him for a separation. She would later describe her marriage to Rosenberg as a total sham, complaining bitterly about his treatment of her during their 22-year marriage. On August 28, 2014, Rivers experienced serious complications and stopped breathing while undergoing what was scheduled to be a minor throat procedure at an outpatient clinic in Yorkville, Manhattan. Episode 4 deals with Carlos Mancinia. A Honduran-American comedian, writer and actor, his style of comedy is often political and involves issues of race relations, Latin American culture, criminal justice and social class. He's best known as the host of the Comedy Central show Mind of Mancia from 2005 to 2008. Around the time of the show's cancellation, several comedians accused Mencia of plagiarism and stealing jokes. Episode 5 deals with the tragedy of Phil Hartman. Hartman was born in 1948 and unfortunately died in 1998. He was a Canadian-born American comedian, actor, screenwriter and graphic designer. In 1975, he joined the comedian group The Groundlings, where he helped Paul Rubens develop his character, Pee Wee Herman. Hartman even co-wrote the film Pee Wee's Big Adventure and made recurring appearances as Captain Carl on Rubens' show, Pee Wee's Playhouse. In 86, Hartman joined the NBC sketch comedy show Saturday Night Live as a cast member and stayed for eight seasons until 1994. Nick Game Glue for his ability to hold the show together and help other cast members. He won a Primetime Emmy Award for SNL work in 1989. He also starred as Bill McNeil on the sitcom News Radio, voiced Lionel Hutz and Troy McClure on The Simpsons, and appeared in supporting roles in films So I Married an Axe Murderer, Houseguest, Sergeant Bilko, Jingle All the Way, 
and small soldiers. After two divorces, Hartman married Breen Omadel in 1987, with whom he had two children. However, their marriage was troubled due to Phil's busy work schedule and Bryn's drug and alcohol abuse. In 1998, while Phil was sleeping in his bed, Bryn shot and killed him and later killed herself. Episode 6 deals with Tracy Morgan. Morgan, a stand-up comedian and actor, was a cast member on, on Saturday Night Live from 1996 to 2003 and most famously played Tracy Jordan in the NBC sitcom 30 Rock from 2006 to 2013, each of which earned him Primetime Emmy Award nominations. He also starred as Trey Baker in the TBC comedy The Last OG. In 1996, Morgan was diagnosed with diabetes and for years struggled with alcohol use disorder. Morgan had conceded that many of his own troubles were incorporated within his 30 Rock episode character. In December 2020, Morgan received a kidney transplant, necessitated by his diabetes and alcohol use disorder. In 2014, Morgan was a passenger in a Mercedes Sprinter minibus involved in a six-vehicle crash in New Jersey. The crash happened just after 1am while travelling northbound on the New Jersey Turnpike near Cranberry when it was struck from behind by a tractor-trailer operated by Walmart causing a chain reaction crash. Morgan and three other comedians including Harris Stanton along with Morgan's assistant and two limousine company employees were returning from an engagement. The crash killed Morgan's friend and collaborator 62-year-old comedian James McNair. Morgan sued Walmart for negligence and settled the lawsuit for a multi-million dollar amount. He had to go through extensive rehab but by June 2015, he made his first appearance after the crash on the Today Show. He's slowly but surely recovered since then. Episode 7 deals with the sitcom Family Matters. This was an American television sitcom that debuted on ABC on September 22, 1989 and ended in 1997. Good enough of Perfect Strangers, the series revolves around the Winslow family, an African-American middle-class family living in Chicago, Illinois. Midway through the first season, the show introduced the Winslow's nerdy neighbor, Steve Urkel, played by Jaleel White, who was originally scripted to appear as a one-time character. However, he quickly became the show's breakout character and eventually the main character, joining the main cast. Running for 215 episodes over nine seasons, Family Matters became the second longest-running live-action U.S. sitcom with a predominantly African-American cast behind only the Jeffersons. They would both be exceeded by Tyler Perry's House of Pain in 2023. Episode 8 deals with Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen starred in the sitcom Ellen from 1994 to 1998, which earned her Primetime Emmy Award. During the fourth season of Ellen in 1997, she came out as lesbian in an appearance on The Oprah Winfrey Show. Her character Ellen Morgan also came out to a therapist played by Winfrey, and the series went to explore various LGBT issues, including coming out process. In 2008, she married longtime girlfriend Portia de Rossi. DeGeneres also provided the voice for Dory in Finding Nemo. And she's hosted the Academy Awards, Grammy Awards and Primetime Emmy Awards. She also hosted the syndicated television talk show, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, from 2003 to 2022. But in 2020, 10 and former employees of Ellen DeGeneres accused DeGeneres of creating a toxic on set atmosphere of racism, fear and intimidation, including failing to address executive sexual harassing female employees and making racist microaggressions and abuse or about employees of colour, firing employees on taking medical and bereavement leave and replacing her own crew with non-union workers during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. Episode 9 deals with Norm MacDonald, a comedian born in 1959 who died in 2021. The Canadian was famous for his deadpan delivery and use of folksy old-fashioned turns of phrase. He appeared in many films and was a regular guest on late-night talk shows where he became known for his chaotic yet understated style of comedy. Many critics and fellow comedians considered him the ultimate talk show guest, while prominent late-night figure David Letterman regarded him as the best of stand-up comedians. He was also a cast member on Saturday Night Live, spending a total of five seasons on the series, which included anchoring the show's Weekend Update segment for three and a half seasons. He was removed as a host of SNL's Weekend Update in 1998 for legendary relentlessly mocking O.J. Simpson during his murder trial. Offending producer Don Olemeyer was a close friend of Simpson. MacDonald died of leukemia in September of 2021, a condition he had not publicly disclosed. In the final episode of season two, the episode deals with the famous comedian Gilda Rainder, who was born in 1946 and unfortunately lost her life in 1989. She was American actress, comedian, writer and singer. Radner was one of seven original cast members on Not Ready for Primetime Players on the NBC sketch show Saturday Night Live from its inception in 1975 until her departure in 1980. Her routines on SNL, she specialized in parodies of television stereotypes such as advice specialists, news anchors, and in 1978, Radner won the Emmy Award for her performances on the show. She also portrayed those characters in a highly successful one-woman show on Broadway in 1979. 
Radner's SNL work established her as an iconic figure in the history of American comedy. She unfortunately died of ovarian cancer in 1989. Her autobiography dealt with, frankly with her life, work and personal struggles, including her struggles with that illness. Her widower, Jean Wilder, carried out her wish that the information about her illness would be used to help other cancer victims, founding and inspiring and founding of organisations that emphasise early diagnosis, attention to hereditary factors and support for cancer patients. Posthumously, Radner won the Grammy Award in 1990 and was inducted into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame in 1992 and received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2003. Now, Dark Side of Comedy Series 2 is a superb season. It covers lesser-known comedians and it covers some of the most famous comedians as well. Some of the episodes are a little bit lighter in nature, as it were, but most, of course, are dark, tragic and just frankly downright sad. This show, though, provides a fascinating insight into these comedic geniuses and the tragedy that befell them. One thing that it does do is it highlights and it makes you remember some of these fantastic talents lost far too soon. Dark Side of Comedy, Series 2, gets a 9 out of 10.